Hey, what is up, guys? My name is Bubloon, aka Pavloon, and today we are back with another ship review. We're taking a look at the Tier 10 Soviet cruiser Sevastopol, a Gneisenau slash Siegfried lookalike in the Soviet configuration. And I'm just gonna say this outright this is not a good ship. And some of you might just click off now because this is not something I will ever recommend in the state it's currently in. We're going to take a look at this first game here and then we're going to take a look at the stats and my build and I'll show you guys another game. The Sevastopol here is a cruiser with six 380mm guns and you have two in the front, one in the rear. It also comes equipped with a ton of consumables as you can see. We get DFA 3, Speed Boost 3 or Speed Modification, whatever it's called. Engine Boost, that's what it's called. Sonar 1 and Precise Aiming 1. I run this with a speed mod, so we could go super fast in this thing. But that's about it. That's really what this thing can do, in my opinion. It is a very, very lackluster ship. And when you only have six guns like you do with this thing, you would expect it to be hard hitting and somewhat accurate. Now the accuracy, let's start with that. The accuracy is not very good. This is German dispersion. So if you have played the Gneisen now or... Well, actually, just the Gneisen now. This, that's what I will compare this to. You will know that you can get some really clunky shells that just, you know, stray completely off your target and not even get close to where you're aiming. You do have precise aiming to help you with that, and I am running dispersion mod in this thing. But it is very inaccurate. Now, I will say that that is not the main problem with this thing. It is most of the time accurate enough so that you can hit cruisers, and we're going to start by hitting this Worcester here. Now, this gameplay I chose is one of the better ones I had. And I'm going to say right now that my stats in this thing are god-awful. I have, I think, a 30% win rate. And my average damage in this is 50k, so it's not very high. And the reason I think that is, is because the Sevastopol's AP guns or AP shells are extremely weak. When you're going to shoot at light cruisers... For example, a Smolensk or a Minotaur, you actually can get half pins most of the time. What you're seeing here is when the guns are performing at their best, I feel. We are also running Makarov with APCS in this thing, and even with that, you're going to have trouble penning ships. So what else does this thing do? Maybe the guns aren't bad. What, what can this thing do? It has so many gimmicks and, you know, shells and stuff. Not shells, consumables. Well, it can go fast. Um, it could go really really fast as you can see it does have a speed boost 3 and that is quite fun to use With the DFA 3 the defensive fire it actually can ward off some planes, but It's only when you use the defensive fire that the AA is actually any good The problem with this thing is when you compare it to Stalingrad or Moskva or even Petra I would argue There's just not really a reason to play this they really need to buff these guns and the penetration. Because if you're going to sit at long range, which is ideally what you should be doing with this thing like we're doing now, you should be able to penetrate stuff that's full broadside. When you are playing this ship though, you tend to have to get closer because, well, the guns don't pen anything. So you think to yourself, okay, maybe I need to be closer. I found out the sweet spot is around 10 kilometers. That's where you get the, the, the best results out of your guns but then the, then again you don't even know if you're gonna hit anything i mean we're gonna get we get we're getting citadels here but guys this is not the, the the full picture of it this is just one of my better games this thing is not tanky either it eats shells and especially he spammers will have a fun time shooting at this thing while i was playing this I mean, every time I got shot at by a Smolensk, it was just instant fires, instant triple fire. I know it's a Smolensk, but you just feel like you melt so fast in this thing. You do have those special heals, and trust me, they come in handy, and they do help the ship quite a lot. But it's just not enough. Once you've used your last heal, you don't really have anything to save yourself with. You're a big ship, you have, you know, a very large surface to hit that people can shoot at and they will do that so what we're doing here is we're just sitting bow in kind of waiting for the destroyers to 
shoot their torpedoes because I am expecting to, you know, them to do that. Meanwhile, we're going to try to take out this Worcester. So we activate precise aim and you can see the dispersion isn't half bad when you use dispersion mod and precise aiming. We did get some nice pens there, but again, that won't happen all the time. This ship dearly needs a buff uh, before, you know, I would say somebody should buy this. This is not a worthwhile purchase at all. And I know the other CCs and YouTubers agree with me on this. I think we all agree that this is not worth it. When I played this on my stream yesterday, I think I had one or two games where my, my first two games where it was it was OK. So I initially said this can't be that bad. But after playing, I think I have 20 games in this now, I can say with certainty that this is not a good ship. Some of the good qualities of this that I really enjoy is, like I said, all the consumables. We're using the speed mod here and with the uh, sorry, the speed boost and with the speed modification in our third slot, we actually can go up to 41 knots which isn't half bad for a ship this size. It's also nice that you have sonar and my favorite quality of this ship is actually the secondaries. I found them to be quite effective and they have just under six kilometers range, which I mean, it's not a Schlieffen, of course, but it does feel like a Siegfried and a Geneisen now in those regards. Here we're gonna come up against a Jinan and a Shimakaze and you can see the turn time, it's uh, it's, it's kind of dreadful. Um, we're turning max here and we, we barely squeezed in between these torpedoes. We have our heal running, so we're gonna we're gonna get out of this kind of scot-free, but yeah, it's, it's a big ship and you're very vulnerable to DDs because you don't have manual secondaries and you don't have torpedoes like Geneisen now and Siegfried do. I think if this ship was to get a buff, they would definitely need to buff the pen characteristic, the penetration values of the AP. Me and Hiromi actually did some pretty funny testing and we tested out IFHE and using high explosive with Sergei Goshkov, the other legendary commander. Now, it's not meant for you to use HE with this ship. Obviously, it's an AP ship, but because of the really, really bad armor piercing penetration values it actually kind of worked using he believe it or not um now that is not the way i ended up playing this ship but it actually gave me more success than the ap did when playing this now the two gameplays the one you're seeing now and the other one coming up next i am using ap because that's how you should play this ship or how it was intended at least but if they don't buff this if they don't change it I would argue that IFHE might even be the better play because it's consistent damage and you get fires. That being said, I still think that a normal commander with APCS or Makarov is the play here. So here we are and um, yeah, let's first go over the details of the ship. You know, you saw what this thing has, but then again, we're going to we're gonna praise it for having some good consumables and skills here. It, it, it is well equipped and... You know, this part of the ship is, is very enjoyable, especially the fact that it has the super heal or the heavy repair team, as it's called, like the British battle cruisers do, and also has the secondaries. I really think that's that's some of the funny things, fun things about this ship. But here we are, the Citadel protection, 12.5%, not very good. And the damage reduction is 10.5%. It does have a pretty nice health pool, 50,000 HP almost. This is quite good, but it definitely does not help you enough. The time to full speed is almost 20 seconds with acceleration and the turn time is 14 seconds. It's very chunky and doesn't maneuver quite well. And here you see the guns, 14 second reload. Quite decent range, almost 15 kilometers, can't complain there, but the pen values of these AP shells is just so bad. Then we have the secondaries here, 100 millimeters, reloads in five seconds, and I found them to be quite accurate. The AA, like I said, is, is there, but it's only good when you use the defensive fire skill, obviously. So let's see here, we took advanced gun director, so you can get 4% more range, which I think you should take. Staying at range is probably the best bet with this ship, since you know when you get close, you don't have any torpedoes to fend off destroyers or fight a battleship at close range. I ran with the speed mod, propulsion modification. I tried steering and I tried concealment, but I ultimately found it most fun and efficient with the speed mod. Now, 
not everybody's gonna do that, obviously, I know, but I am a very aggressive player, so that's just the way I build it. We are using Stepan Makarov, and like I said, the game you saw, the first game here, was my ultimately the best one I had. I got Citadels, um, and you, you don't get that often with this ship. So, we're running Makarov, and he's good because he's got Marksman Plus and Adrenaline Rush Plus, which I think is really fun to use on these types of ships. He's got Engine Overload, of course, and we take Honor Seeker. And the big thing, the reason I took Makarov is because he has APCS Plus, but even with that, I found it difficult to deal damage to ships. Now, here's my build with Sergei Goshkov, and I think this is honestly the way to build it. He gives you improved air defense, and I mean, I won't complain. You can also get Marksman Plus and Adrenaline Rush, but instead of APCS, you take IFHE, which sounds so counterintuitive and weird. It also feels like that, but that's what I had most success with, and I think you will too if you end up getting this ship and it's not going to get buffed. So that's the way I build it, and that's the stats of the ship. Now let's take a look at this other game I had. So here we are, we're playing with Red Gaming Dino in his trusty Rogolo, and we're going to be trying to do some damage with the Sevastopol. Now, you're really going to see in this game what I am talking about with the bad armor-piercing penetration. We're going to be shooting at this midway in, the, in this game here, and you're going to see how how hard it is to actually deal damage along with this well somewhat bad accuracy that the these german guns come with now you would think that this thing is pretty tanky and i can tell you it's not it's the the armor layout is comparable to a riga and if anyone has played riga you will know that riga is not an easy ship to play and you know it it, it sets on fire very easily now ha having this heal is obviously a big plus but <laughs> I found it just doesn't save you enough. Here we're going to see the AA in action. I thought this midway was definitely going to go for me, but with the DFAA3, we actually can shoot down a bunch of these midway bombers, which isn't half bad. I mean, it's better than its peers at tier 10, the Soviet cruisers, and I mean, I won't complain. But like I said, that is only because it's a defensive fire 3. So that Shimmer there, he he got completely blapped, and we're going to see Red here do a nice blind shot on him. <laughs> there we go. That, that is one that is one of the most annoying feelings in the world when you're playing a torpedo destroyer and you just get annihilated by the CV and everyone else on the team. So here we go. We open up on the Montana. He's full broadside and we actually get some decent pens. Now we're going to shoot this Vermont here and I mean overall it's 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 pretty good at these ranges but the fact is it's just not consistent these salvos you're seeing here i mean you won't complain right 1400 almost 1500 damage per hit is not bad at all but it's the inconsistency that's the main problem here for me at least it's um you can see there i mean that was a pretty bad salvo on my part we did hit his his belt and not his deck which is what you want and at this range but 745 damage is just not enough when you have a 14 second reload and you have only six guns that is a full broadside montana now i can't really see if i'm hitting his deck or his his belt but i'm pretty sure we're hitting his deck at these ranges now that's a pretty good salvo that is with precise aiming and you, we do get a citadel so hmm what are you talking about bob this can't be half bad you're just you're just complaining now to complain but just you wait and see uh, the, the the cv we're going to be fighting or shooting at later he is going to show that this thing does nothing uh, consistently at all now what i think this thing needs obviously like i said is an ap pen buff a maybe a second off the reload and and i think that would help it quite a lot it does need some other skills um not skills it does need more buffs but to start out with it definitely needs to have better gun characteristics because that's pretty much all this this thing has it's kind of like the new Shimmy where it just has a bunch of you know skills and consumables but you know doesn't really excel in anything else and now we're gonna see okay we got some we got some full pens four hits okay no citadel this time maybe we can get a citadel in the next salvo i'm gonna keep shooting this guy this is a very short game as you can see we're pretty much done already but as you can see it's it's not looking good i mean the, the, this is 380 millimeter guns the same caliber well almost the same caliber as a colombo and if a colombo was shooting this midway 
even with just six guns, he would get citadels and do more damage, I am almost willing to bet. But we're going to keep shooting him. We're going to activate precise aiming, and we're going to try our best to deal damage to this midway. But you can see, we're I think this is the fourth salvo, third, third salvo. We're not doing any damage to this guy, and we're hitting his bow, we're hitting his stern, we're hitting his deck. We're, we're trying different things. Nothing is happening. I'm pretty sure I don't even get a citadel on this guy, which is quite unheard of and there you go that's i think one full pen and five non pens on a f almost full broadside midway with plunging fire and apcs plus remember that i'm using makarov in these clips so so the, the yeah the tldr of this guys is this is not worth it in the current state i'm pretty sure we're good hopefully i mean i can't say for sure i'm hoping that they buff this ship before it gets released but we don't know um we have definitely said, you know, our opinions on this ship and hopefully it will change because I got to say, I was actually looking forward to this. I was really, I was waiting for this ship ever since it got released on PC and I think it's a really cool concept. I love these battle cruisers, but this thing is just not worth the, the, the struggle you have to go through to play, for, you know, play it well. We didn't get to brawl that Worcester. I would have loved to do that, but um, we did win the game thanks to my team. Yeah, it definitely wasn't me. I can tell you that. So here we are at the end of the video, and um, if anyone is thinking of buying this ship, I can only say good luck to you. This is not fun to play. I didn't enjoy myself playing this. It was actually frustrating to say the least, and I typically enjoy ships that are bad and try to make them work, but this one, I couldn't really make it work. I am hoping to see buffs for this, and if it does release very soon, I'm just going to say be cautious in, in don't expect much from this ship. But I hope you enjoyed the video. My name has been Pavloon, aka Bubloon, and I am signing out.